Greetings and salutations. Happy New Year all and wishing everyone a great 2024. Okay, let's get into it. I recently had a client that has their mail hosted with Office 365 and wanted to use Microsoft built-in tools to download their attachments. And I'm talking about thousands of email attachments needed to be downloaded and later processed for data extraction. Enter Microsoft Graph. I'm going to go over with you setting this up from start to finish and also show you how to get rid of the 10 limit download safely. Okay, follow along and let's begin. So, the first thing we need to do is actually set up our app and grant permissions to run the API. So log into your Azure portal and click App Registrations. Add a new registration. Give it a name, select the access level and hit register. I will just go into my already created app here. Now here you want to make note of your application ID and your directory ID. We will reference that later. Under manage, click certificates and secrets. Under client secrets, create a new client secret. Note the value and secret ID as the value won't be viewable once the session ends. Under API permissions, select add a permission and for Microsoft Graph, add all mail.read permissions. Now, if my memory serves correct, that is all that needs to be done from the portal aspect. So let's go over to PowerShell now. The first thing we want to do is install the PowerShell module for MSAL. It's an authentication library which enables you to acquire tokens from Azure AD. Run the command install-module name msal.ps. You're going to run that and go through the installation process. Once that installs, Let's go ahead and code how we will receive our token. We need to specify a variable connection called connection details. With our tenant ID, client ID, and client secret that we got earlier from the portal. Specify just like this and add the conversion to secure a string after your client's secret. We then call our get-msal token with our connection details and pass that to our token variable. Now this actually returns an array of data. We need to specifically assign the token value to a variable and we do that with the token.access token. So let's look at our inbox. Now in my case, I was targeting a subfolder several folders deep under my inbox. But for some reason, when I specified the folder location under the inbox, it would not find it. It wouldn't register. There is a good resource that helped me, 
called the Developer Graph Explorer. If we go to our Developer Graph Explorer and run a query on this uh, me slash mail folders, it only returns top level folders, nothing under my inbox folder. If you scroll through the return results, So I'm going to save you guys the headache. And this is what you do. You get the ID of the subfolder and query with that ID. So after mail folders specify your inbox. that just returns mail that's in your inbox which I, I don't have any there now if we run the command after inbox we add expand equals child folders We then find our target folder and copy that ID. My target folder is several layers deep, so I would grab the ID of that folder and run the same command specifying that ID instead of inbox. and keep drilling down until you get the ID of your target folder. Once we get that target ID, we specify that ID in our endpoint to get mails within that folder. It would look like this. This will return our email messages and this would be our target endpoint when calling the API. Okay, great, halfway there. Let's take that URL that we got and pass that to a variable. Now we will construct a query using that URL where we filter on IDs that has attachments only. And we do that with this line. Now we store in our message variable where we call a rest method using the query and passing our headers with our access token. Also note, your key is good for 20 minutes so you may need to rerun it depending on how fast you get this done. So now we have all our target messages in our variable. 
So now we loop over those messages dot values. Let's set our query for the attachments. Like this. Then let's call our rest method with our query and headers and pass it to an attachment variable. Now an email can contain numerous attachments. So let's loop over each potential attachment. The object attachment.name will be our attachment name. So let's hold that in a variable f name with the location we want it saved to. So we assign the content of that attachment to a content variable with this line. Then we write the content to a file with this line. And we close our loop. Now, Graph uses a limit of 10 emails by default. You can override that, but I think it's safer to leave that in place and just loop over the data. So to call the next link that graphs returns, we add the text data dot next link. And we call it like this. We reference our return messages and add the text. Then we call our rest method with our newly constructed query. So to get this to loop over all the messages, I constructed it like this. And that's how we would call the Graph API to download all emails within a particular folder in my inbox. If we look at the folder where we want our attachment downloaded, it's empty. So if we run this, we can see all of our emails being downloaded in our specified directory. And there are way more than 10, 10 attachments. So I will stop this, but essentially, this is how we use Graph to download email attachments. Well, as always, thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. This has been brought to you by AIP Solutions.